Good afternoon. It's another incredible day here at Byron Bay. You can see, what can you see? You can see Julian Rocks out there. Julian Rocks? Oh, you probably can't. Julian Rocks is where I did my dive master training to become a dive instructor. I dived, swam around the bottom of that rock for hours, mapping it out as part of the dive instructor's course. Some of the best diving I've ever done, Julian Rocks. But I didn't want to talk about that. I wanted to talk about three studies I've written about recently and the link between the three of them. One study was about the microbiome of children with autism. The other study was about the microbiome of hunter-gatherers in Tanzania. And the third study was about women and fibroids which are benign tumors of the uterus. So what's the link between those three studies? Well, the link is, of course, what am I talking about? I'm talking about sunlight, and I'm talking about magnetism of the earth. So how does that all work? Okay, so the study with children with autism showed that children with autism had abnormal microbiomes, and that abnormal microbiome caused loss of integrity of intestinal epithelium, which allowed bacteria and toxins from the gut to leak into the bloodstream. And those toxins and bacteria leak into the bloodstream, poison the mitochondria, cause mitochondrial dysfunction, and of course mitochondria, mitochondria are responsible for the energy supply to the brain. So an abnormal microbiome is now implicated as one of the causes, one of the predisposing factors to autism. The second study showed that when a man moved to Tanzania and lived for just three days with a hunter-gatherers, the Hazda in Tanzania, his microbiome improved dramatically. He got much greater diversification of microbial species, which unfortunately returned to his normal level once he returned to his existence in a city. And the third study showed that women with normal levels of vitamin D and much lower incidence of uterine fibroids. So how does all that work? Well, the key is the hunter-gatherer lifestyle. And what they found when they lived with a hunter-gatherer gatherers is just how they lived their life. The big changes, the difference in how they lived their life was involved in light, food, and magnetism. So what happened with food? Well, with food, they had kind of tubers or roots for breakfast. They had a large lunch, mainly porcupine and local berries, and quote, they didn't do much for dinner. So the key there is it's soul foods, seasonal, organic, unprocessed, and local, which is good for the microbiome. And the tubers they were having are also help increase microbiome diversity. I wrote recently about how that when you eat turmeric, not much of it gets absorbed, but guess what? Nature's smart, and it's good that not all of it gets absorbed because the turmeric in the gut protects the gut from its toxicity and also improves the microbiome. So sometimes you don't want all of your food being absorbed. So they ate soul foods, they had a big lunch and not much for dinner, and lunchtime, midday is when your gut is at its maximum effectiveness. And they laid, ate a lot of tubers from the ground which helped improve the microbiome. Next thing was light. So what they get exposed to? They got exposed to a lot of sunlight and they got sunlight on their abdomen. And we now know that sunlight penetrates the body and sunlight improves the microbiome. And that's also the link with the third study, whereas you can bet your bottom dollar that those women who had very low incidence of uterine fibroids and had normal levels of vitamin D we're outside getting sunlight in their abdomen because we now know that sunlight penetrates the body and vitamin D is produced locally in tissues. So you want vitamin D being produced in your uterus, in your prostate gland, in your breast by getting exposed to sunlight. And the third thing is magnetism. Oh, and the other thing about light, of course, with the hunter is no artificial light. They, they live during the day and at night they slip by the fire. So the only light they get exposed to was sunlight, starlight, and firelight. And of course, they're sleeping on the ground 
They're walking around with bare feet, so they're exposed to the magnetism of the Earth, the electromagnetic frequency on the Earth. No artificial, non-native electromagnetic frequencies. And guess where they're showering and washing at night? They don't have hot showers. It's cold water you get exposed to when you're hunter gatherer. We only had hot water for a, just over a hundred years. So that was the key to the fibroids, the autism, autism, the microbiome, soul foods, big lunch, tubers, sunlight on the abdomen, minimizing artificial life. Get your bare feet on the ground, connect to Mother Earth and its electromagnetic frequencies. Get it some cold water. Nature's wisdom, reconnecting to nature. This channel is about humanism. It's a positive message. It's about localism. It's about self-reliance, self-sovereignty, peace, love, faith, hope. It's a positive message for humanity by reconnecting with Mother Nature. Oh, and don't forget to protect your skin without the sun. Hunter gatherers was always protected their skin. Native Americans always protected their skin. They used lard from animals. They used plant oils. I make my own one to protect my skin when I'm out in the sun. Peace and love. Have a great day. See you next time.